Welcome back everyone to Montgomery County's Engage at Home, brought to you by the County's Caregiver Support Program. Today we have a very special guest, Jennifer Brush. Jennifer is a speech language pathologist, researcher, educator in the field of dementia. She is also the author of several books about dementia and Jennifer is part of the Ohio Council for Cognitive Health. Welcome, Jennifer. And if you could tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself. Sure, thank you, Lily. It's great to be here today. I am a researcher who specializes in studying how the environment affects older adults and people who are living with dementia. And I help families, uh, long-term care communities, other healthcare organizations all around the world to create supportive environments for people with dementia. Thank you. So Jennifer, would you step us through what is the Ohio Council for Cognitive Health and why um, should people in Montgomery County, Maryland care about it? Well, the Ohio Council for Cognitive Health is a nonprofit organization that was created to help individuals living with cognitive impairment to have a life that's filled with meaning, purpose, and joy. We provide free educational resources for everyone. It doesn't matter where they live uh, through our hand in hand program. And our hand in hand program means that rather than doing for people living with dementia, we partner with them, with their loved ones and with their community too. On our website, which you'll see today, people can find the tools and the information that they need to feel empowered to meet those daily challenges associated with dementia. You know, for example, we share simple things you can do to transform your home into a supportive place that helps loved ones with dementia to function better. Mm, thank you so much. And I'm really glad that you volunteered your time to be here today. So we're going to segue now and have a look at the website for the Ohio Council for Cognitive Health. And I'm going to appreciate you stepping us through and informing us about those resources. So Jennifer, here we are on the Ohio Council for Cognitive Health website. Would you please take us on a tour? I'm happy to. Um, first, you'll visit our website at ocfch.org. Once you get to the home page, click on the quick tips in the upper navigation bar and it will bring up this page. We have a number of topics on our quick tips page and they're all topics that caregivers have told us that they want more information about. So for every topic, we have a web page and a free downloadable handout. And then some topics have videos with additional information and we'll be looking at some of those today. So I think, Lily, that I'd like to look at supporting memory first, if you could click on visit page. So our site really focuses on simple, low cost or no cost changes that can be made to help people living with cognitive impairment to be more independent. And this is a great example of that. Cognitive impairment can make individuals feel much more anxiety and stress. They can become sensitive to their physical and social environments, and they rely more on their senses for cues about what's going on around them. Um, individuals may forget where they are, what to do next, or even where things are located. So creating a memory center in the home can help to create a sense of security and it reduces anxiety because the person knows where to look for important information. It uses pictures and words to help compensate for memory loss. And what it does is it lets the person focus on what he or she can do um, instead of calling attention to what they can't do. Once you create a memory center in your home with practice, 
what it does is it becomes the go-to place for important information such as times, dates, things to do, daily schedules. We have information on this page about how that you can set up a memory center in the home. And if you scroll down just a little further, there's a video that we can watch. Here's a quick tip to show you how to set up a simple memory center at home. A memory center is helpful for someone who forgets to take medications, misses appointments, or loses items easily. It can lead to more independence for someone with dementia while taking some of the burden off the care partner for reminders about daily events. First, declutter and clear a spot in a central location in your home. For most people, a spot in the kitchen works best. You'll need a large desktop or wall calendar, a digital clock, a notebook, pens, medication box, a red folder, and a few organizing containers. Next, label containers for items such as keys, phone, things that you use every day, and write all appointments and events in large print on the calendar. Place the clock where it can easily be seen and put the filled medication box on the counter with a note or timer for the times medication are taken. You may need to have a checklist there for marking when the medication has been taken. You may want to consider purchasing a new telephone. Phones with large buttons are ideal for people with low vision or limited fine motor abilities. Picture phones have room for a picture of the person next to the memory dial button. This is best for people with significant memory issues. Last, gather all important health information for everyone living in the household. Make sure the information includes all medical diagnoses, such as dementia, medications, your physician name and number, allergies, etc. List the name and the number of the emergency contact to be called if the care partner for the person with dementia is taken ill and place it in a red folder labeled in case of an emergency. Try out these ideas and see which ones work best for you. The idea is that your loved one will be able to go to the same place for frequently used items and to find out what's happening each day. This cuts down on repetitive question asking and can also reduce anxiety. We think you'll find that creating a memory center is a very quick and effective tip that will make your day easier. Just as a reminder, you are listening to Montgomery County, Maryland's Engage at Home, the new YouTube channel especially designed for family caregivers. If you need immediate assistance, please contact the county's Aging and Disability Services on 240-777-3000. So here we are back at the Ohio Council for Cognitive Health's main webpage. Jennifer, what else would you like our listeners to visit? Let's scroll down and take a look at the Dementia Friendly Home section and click on Visit Page. And the reason I'd like to visit this page is because I'd like to mention that people don't realize as we age, there are changes that happen to our eyes that require some changes in the home. Because of these changes related to aging, we need brighter light, we need more contrast between objects in order to see them clearly. And then people living with dementia experience additional visual changes. In this section of our website, viewers can read about the simple changes that they can try at home. For example, if you click on the color and contrast tab, we explain that contrast can be used to help people with a dementia to identify key features and rooms um, and to facilitate independent living. Um, a tip for adding contrast to the bathroom is to use a colored seat that contrasts with the toilet and with other nearby surfaces to make the toilet more visible and more identifiable. Um, in the dining room, for example, you could try using a placemat that contrasts with the plates 
so the plates are easier to see. Um, in other places throughout the house, you might want to try changing the switch plate covers to a bright color so they stand out from the wall so it's easier to see the light switch. Um, you can also paint edges of steps with contrasting paint or use contrasting colored tape. And that can help improve safety because it visually reinforces that change from steps to flat surfaces. So if you scroll down just a little more, there's a video there um, and we can watch this video about ways to increase bathroom independence. Here's a quick tip to show you how to set up the bathroom for independence and reduce the likelihood of incontinence. One reason the bathroom can be problematic for people with dementia is that there's usually very little contrast between items in the room. Here are examples of low contrast. When there isn't enough contrast, the fixtures, wall, and floor look like they blend together. This makes it very difficult for someone with dementia to find what they need and be independent. Older adults in general need two to three times more contrast and lighting than younger people in order to see things easily. Try painting the wall behind the sink and toilet a bright cheery color that really makes the fixtures stand out. You could also replace a white toilet seat with a colored one, making it easier for someone to see. Make sure the lights near the vanity are bright white and purchase a night light that will automatically turn on once the room is dark. That will improve safety during nighttime visits to the bathroom. Think about how you can make frequently used items stand out. For example, a colored toothbrush that's a different color from the counter. Towels that contrast with the wall color. These simple changes will help someone find what they need more easily. Now that you have made your bathroom dementia friendly, take a look around your home. You can apply these same principles and make your whole home more supportive for your loved one with dementia. This is just a reminder that you are engaged at home and that we are sharing information with you of a wonderful website that is available to everyone to enjoy. If you need immediate assistance as a caregiver, please contact Montgomery County, Maryland's Aging and Disability Services on 240-777-3000. So here we are back on the Ohio Council for Cognitive Health's website. Jennifer, what else would you like our viewers to look at. Let's scroll down to the communication strategies icon and visit that page because I think that is something that caregivers would like to be able to improve. We all want to be able to communicate effectively with our loved one and conversations can be difficult for people with dementia Really, as care partners, we have to learn how to adjust our style of communication so it's easier for the person with dementia to understand us and to follow the conversation. So on this page, we have a variety of tips for effective communication. We have ideas for communication starters and aids to communication. But really, my favorite communication tool is a memory book. A memory book is wonderful because it helps us connect on a very personal level with the individual. It allows us to reminisce with them. It helps them to reminisce. And it provides a lot of topics for conversation for both people. So if you scroll down on this page a little more, the first video is a general video about better conversation. And then the second video is a video that's specifically about memory books. So let's watch the one about memory books. Here's a quick tip for creating memory books at home. Memory books are a fun way to connect and communicate with a person who's living with dementia. We all use tools to help compensate for our challenges. Eyeglasses help us see, hearing aids help us hear, and canes help us walk. 
these tools improve our quality of life. A memory book contains written information that can be used to help someone compensate for memory loss. A memory book is a simple story of a person's life. Each page contains a single photograph and one sentence or phrase describing it. Sentences are written in the first person and include the names of people and places in the photos. Here's what you need to get started. A three ring binder, preferably with a clear pocket in the front for a photo. White paper, non-glare page protectors, family photos, a computer. Make a written list of the sentences you'd like to include in the memory book. Find a family picture that clearly illustrates each sentence. Print one sentence in large plain letters, such as 36 point type size. Make sure the person can read it easily by asking them to read it aloud to you. Increase the print size if needed. Then get to work. Type one sentence on each page and paste in the picture making it as large as you're able to. Print each page and place it in a non-glare page protector. Put all book pages in a three ring notebook. Ask your loved one to help you choose a photo of themselves that brings back good memories for the cover of the book. Next, share the memory book with its new owner. Here are a few tips for using a memory book to have a conversation. Ask the person to have a conversation with you. Guide the conversation by commenting on the photos and the information in the book. Reassure the person and help out when she gets stuck and can't find a word. Smile and act interested in whatever the person is talking about, even if you're not quite sure what's being said. Please don't quiz the person or ask a lot of specific questions. Don't correct or contradict something that was stated, even if you know that it's wrong. Thank the person for talking with you. Try these quick tips for creating a memory book. It will help you to have a better conversation with your loved one with dementia. Jennifer, this is really wonderful information. And I met you in Montgomery County, Maryland, but I know that you have deep associations with the Ohio Council for Cognitive Health. Just give us a little bit more information about that council. Sure, the Ohio Council for Cognitive Health was founded by Dr. Bonnie Berman, who is the former director of the Ohio Department on Aging. And the goal of the council is really to change people's perspective about dementia. Um, the great thing about Bonnie is that she's an agent of change. So the council brings people together um, in an effort to view the world of dementia differently. Um, she really pushes people to transform elder care in a positive way. And our resources are available to anyone, anywhere. Thank you, Jennifer. Is there anything else on the Ohio Council for Cognitive Health's webpage that you would like to guide our viewers to? The hand in hand section is a wealth of information for any family care partner. Um, and if you're listening to this podcast, you probably are a family care partner. The hand-in-hand -hand approach is founded on the idea that people with dementia are part of our community, that they shouldn't be labeled by their illness, and we want care partners to feel empowered rather than defeated, um, that they can build a new approach to life with dementia. So we're here to help you. We know that you can do this, and this is a good place for you to come to get the help that you need to browse through our resources, to download handouts and share the information with your loved ones. So scrolling down now, I can see that there is a rich array of categories.
Jennifer, it's really been a pleasure to learn more about this incredible organisation and the work that you do. Thank you. I think it's important that we all join together to create a new way of looking at dementia and awareness and education are the way to begin. And so this organization has really dedicated itself to providing these free resources to caregivers. Yeah, it's been a real pleasure to uh, view. I'm just going to repeat the website. Um, it is www.periodocfch.org. I will also have that listed on Engage at Home so people can just click on the link. Thank you. Jennifer, it's been such a pleasure to connect with you again. Um, we're at the end of our time together. Are there any closing words that you have for um, the folk who are viewing and listening to this today? Well, it's been an honor to be here and I appreciate being invited. What I've learned throughout the years working with family caregivers is that sometimes they just need a little extra information that will get them through the day and make their day easier. Um, we have done our best to provide a, a variety of tips and tools. They may not work for everyone, but if they take the time to go through and read the information, they'll find that one piece of information that may make the difference for them that day. And if we've done that, then we've been successful. Wonderful. So beautifully um, expressed. And once again, thank you for sharing your valuable time with us here in Montgomery County, Maryland. Thank you.